Hey there, guys. This is The Rio Grande. By now, you've probably heard the story either in whatever news feed you get or it was on NPR last night. I want Lee Curtis to tell you what is unfolding in El Paso with respect to the Shelter Annunciation House. And then I want you to understand how we are all connected to that shelter. So Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has um, filed an injunction against uh, Annunciation House in El Paso. Uh, requesting documents for operations, uh, detailing their operations in El Paso. Now, for those of you who don't know, Annunciation House has been uh, the longest running shelter for asylum seekers in El Paso, operating uh, well into the 90s. Yeah, they were open 40 years. Over 40 years. Over 40 okay. years, yeah. Um, and so they've been doing this work for a long, long time and have really led the way in making El Paso a place that sets up a system to welcome those who are legally coming into our country seeking asylum uh, with dignity and respect. And they've created a network that RGBM, Rio Grande Borderland Ministries, participates in, uh, including our shelter at St. Christopher's. Yeah, so I want you to really understand that the shelter that we operate as the Diocese of the Rio Grande at St. Christopher's Episcopal Church in El Paso is part of the Annunciation House Network. So there is an interfaith and ecumenical group of churches that are gathering to help support the the U.S. government in sheltering those legal asylum seekers who arrive at the border. And we receive those asylum seekers legally here in the country from the Border Patrol when they drop them off at St. Christopher's. But the whole reason they drop them off at St. Christopher's is we're part of the network created by Annunciation House. So we are um, part of 18 other congregations and organizations in that network. Um, and Border Patrol receives a certain amount of asylum seekers in every day. They coordinate with Annunciation House, who knows that, for example, at St. Christopher's, we receive on Tuesdays. And when we have enough volunteer presence on Thursdays as well, we can talk to you more about how we get that volunteer presence. But we let Annunciation House know this is these are the days we'll be open. This is our bed capacity here at St. Christopher's. Border Patrol gives them the larger number, and then Annunciation House goes back to Border Patrol and says, you can drop off 25 migrants here. You can drop off 50 here on these days. And so we've been um, in partnership with Annunciation House and Border Patrol uh, in a vital service for El Paso and for our southern border, because if these folks aren't in our shelters many times, we've seen even when we're overflowing, they end up on the streets in downtown El Paso, sometimes as far out as Deming or sometimes as far north as Albuquerque. And so uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton um, asked Annunciation House for documents related to their operations on a comically short timeline. And now that Annunciation House has uh, asked for more time to respond to that request, uh, they are threatening um, a cease and desist for uh, Annunciation House's operations in El Paso, which would directly affect our capacity to continue sheltering asylum seekers, and not just us, but 18 other congregations and organizations all around El Paso. And like I said before, our shelters, our temporary shelters, are an alternative to these asylum seekers being released directly onto the streets. And so we see this as a vital part of our service to our borderland, but also living the call that Jesus has put on us to welcome the migrant and the stranger. So a couple of things I want to make sure you understand. First of all, we are sheltering people who are legally here in the country. They have claimed asylum and are waiting their hearing. And yes, would it be better that we had more courts to hear immediately asylum claims when people arrive at the border? Absolutely. Do we need a secure border? Absolutely. Are we interested in stopping the drug cartels and the gun runners and the human traffickers and the sex traffickers from bringing people and illegal goods and into our country? Absolutely. What the politicians need to be working on, instead of trying to shut down the shelter that is preserving human life because the government isn't doing it, the politicians instead need to start focusing on fixing the governmental policy and giving us meaningful reform of our border policies so that we don't have the situation that we are in right now. But to try to shut down the shelters that are doing the hard work of caring for the people because the government won't do it, that's not okay. And trying to tell a church that we cannot follow the teachings of Jesus Christ to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and welcome the stranger, that's not okay. And I want to say one last thing, Bishop. Uh, Part of what Annunciation House and the Annunciation House Network has brought is that El Paso and El Paso County is a model 
for the rest of our borderland as to how we can do this in this broken policy environment, of how we can respond compassionately. And what I don't want to happen, and I'm, I'm afraid it might, is that we'll take something good, a compassionate, humane, Christian way of responding to this crisis, and break it in order to point at the problem, in order to say that uh, there is no way for us to deal with this when in fact, Annunciation House has been leading the way in El Paso for over 40 years. And so friends, we wanna make it very clear what's happening here uh, and want to send our love and support and our continued partnership to those uh, faithful souls at Annunciation House and in the Roman Catholic Diocese of El Paso. Now, I know some of you might be wondering, okay, Bishop, so what would meaningful policy change look like? Let me briefly outline it. And I, and I wanna tell you, Lee, a story that was told to me by a Border Patrol officer within the last couple of weeks. And the Border Patrol officer broke it down like this. Said, it's not that complicated, Bishop. You live in a house, right? I said, yes, I live in a house. He said, well, if someone's trying to climb in the window of your house, you're gonna to wanna to close that window, right? Yeah, I'm gonna close that window. Don't climb, just come climbing into my house in the middle of the night. I'm gonna to wanna to close that window and secure that window. But if someone comes up to my front door and they ring the doorbell and I look out the window and I see who they are, I would open the door, talk to them, find out who they are. Now, if they got a gun and they're trying to come in and steal some stuff, I'm gonna close the door on them. But if they're coming in and they're neighbors and we wanna learn and get to know them, I would welcome them in. We'd sit on the couch together and we'd be there together. So this Border Patrol agent, I think with great wisdom and simplicity said, we need a Border Patrol policy that stops people climbing in the window illegally. But that means we need to be really good at the checkpoints about having the equipment and the, the judges and the legal staff that are there in order to assess legitimate asylum claims and weed those out from people that are trying to lie and cheat and steal their way into the country. And we need to not release people for two or three years wandering around the country in hopes that they'll come back for a court date, which may or may not happen or get postponed because we don't have enough judges. We know what we need to do, which is close the window and stop illegal entry into the country. And part of what we need to do to make that happen is to make sure that legal asylum claims and workers who want to come in and work and send their money home to their families work that um, we need done here in America. We need that kind of policy reform so that the, the front door is secure, but it is also open in a humanitarian way, treat people as human beings, while we keep the windows closed so people aren't climbing in trying to steal stuff or hurt us. So it's not that hard, it's expensive, but what gets me upset, and you can probably hear the energy in my voice, is when political people are not interested in solving the problem, they're trying to shut down those of us who are doing the hard work that government's not currently doing. So my friends, I do want you to know we are a part of the Annunciation House Network. We are not doing anything illegal. And we don't like it when people tell us that we can't follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, who is calling on us to love our neighbor and to feed those who are hungry, to care for the children, and to clothe those who need clothing. So. Pray for everybody along the border. Give thanks and pray for those who serve in the Border Patrol. Pray for those who are at risk of life and limb seeking asylum in the United States of America. And pray that our politicians will roll up their sleeves and actually work together towards a positive solution that will fix the problem. God bless you, Diocese of the Rio Grande. We'll talk to you soon.